Hi, and welcome to a uh, a new, vaguely experimental uh, Merely Role Players bonus, uh, which I think we're going to call Director's Notes, uh, where we're going to have a little discussion about season one and some of th- some of the behind the scenes things that could have happened but didn't or maybe were planned or things that people think they should have done differently and that kind of stuff shoulda woulda coulda shoulda woulda couldas of season one so all the crew from season one are here hello hello hi, hi. so we've got ellie vicky alex and strat around the table um does anybody have any burning questions that they want to like kick off with I am desperate to know what you thought things were going to turn out as. Like, I I think we did we stray a long way from your predestined path. Uh, not a huge long way, no. Um, the I sort of expected a big showdown on the stage, mm-hmm. largely because like the stage was the most likely place for weird stuff to happen, given the way that I designed the weird phenomena to happen. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I tried to not plan too heavily exactly how you could, like, end things. And I wanted to try and stay open to the idea that maybe you wouldn't fully banish the evil, uh, or that there'd be some, you know, some trace of it left, or that there'd, there'd be some cost. The main thing I had planned for that never got used was the the possibility that you could cross over to the... You could cross the fourth wall... Mm. And end oh. up, like on the same plane of existence as the <gasps> as the things. That'd be really cool. And yeah, that would be really cool. So you came closest, Alex. Right. When you when you got pelted, oh. uh, covered, covered in shadow goo. Right. If you hadn't managed <clears> to turn that around to your own advantage, you'd have got pulled over into like their shadowy fourth wall breaking world. Oh, damn it. And, and then we could have done like a well. we could have done like a seancey thing. Yeah, you might have been able to get him back, or he might have become and he might have had to keep rolling to not hurt you and stuff like that. Right. Uh, that oh, would so I would have become one of those shadowy demons. So you yeah. would have seen a, an Alex shaped shadowy demon. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Waving at us like a gift. <laughs> I don't like it. Who's, did who's anything? Do the show now. <laughs> did anything? Maybe it just forces him to do Captain Iron Face. Other than was there anything in particular that we did that surprised you that you um, you didn't think it would would go that way? Like nothing is totally predictable, and everything because it was the the. F- it was definitely obviously the first one of these we'd done on mic and um only really the second or third role playing game of any kind that I, I GM'd. Um so everything felt a bit like rolling with the punches. Captain Iron Face was definitely the the most unexpected, <laughs> the thing that I hadn't even No one saw that coming thought could happen. Even I didn't see that coming. No, I will be honest, that was yeah, you saying rolling with the punches, that was me just making it up as I went along. Yeah, yeah. Um and that, but I think that's one of the best moments of the of the story. <laughs> it's, one of, it's one of the most memorable moments. Yeah. yeah. Oh, here's so. Unless has anyone else got another? Okay. Because like, right of the, of the the NPCs of the other characters. It's it's <laughs> it's not. It's if you were going to think, I was going to say what the hell is going on with all the bob. That's exactly <laughs> what I thought you were going to say. <laughs> I mean that also, we can but get to that. of of the NPC characters. Um, that, what does that mean? Non-player character. Okay. Yeah. So, it's so they're any, like the pre-programmed characters. Yeah, any character yeah. that I am yeah. running. I get it. Yeah. Now this is going to show now because um, it's been a while since I last listened to it. So the, the theatre manager was yeah, Tess. Tess. And then the techie... B. Was Phoebe. B. Yeah, Phoebe. Yeah. And then so, Errol. Yes, Errol. Errol came in, mm-hmm. had a load of Bovril stolen by Alex. Yeah. Still, <laughs> still rankles with me that people call it theft when it clearly wasn't. If there, you was a vote. To it, there was a vote. There was a vote which I vote. think was rigged. <laughs> news. I'm stable. I'm a stable genius. <laughs> the stablest genius we know. One of the most stablest geniuses is ever. You know what the You are yeah. like some of the best incredibly ones. smart. So incredibly smart <laughs> sometimes. Um, but <laughs> so other than having his bovril stolen, uh, and then be, like he sent, he seemed like maybe you were expecting something more to happen with him because the others they definitely had a, a very definite role and took us somewhere and did something whereas Errol was there he was just a strange interloper <laughs> yeah so but I, I wondered if we didn't do anything to really bring out the proper thing did we not push his buttons yeah <laughs> For, from like a game running mechanical perspective one of the roles that he was fulfilling was if stuff was getting a bit 
um, uh, stagnant and not very much was happening and it was just like people getting into their own little circles and not really moving things forward. Mm. He was... Errol was a slightly clumsy, oafish character so that, an I, that I could have do something wrong to force you to react. Yeah. Uh, so like, like dropped a stage light. light. Yeah. yeah. Right. Errol is the agent of chaos. Yeah. A little bit. Got yeah. you. Um, but Does also, that mean then we were generally not rec- needing him? Generally, yeah. There, there wasn't a huge amount of mm. use for him. Okay. Um, he was also, like, he was someone that I had in the back of my mind that I could put him in trouble Mm. And that you might oh, okay. have to rescue him. It's a bit right. feckless. Yeah, he was somebody who, like, <laughs> I was hoping that all of the, the kitchen antics would maybe give at least some of you some some level of like affection for him <laughs> and his and his ways. No, we hated that, him. And that if he got into trouble, you might want to rescue no, him. No, we'd have just left him. As it was, you, you kind of got got yourself <laughs> into trouble well enough I anyway. Punched a person in the face. We know what you did with a torch. That's <laughs> worse than punching them in the face. <laughs> I got so close to using the whole kitchen antics thing as an explain away, which I never got to. I think it was fine because we got some stuff. <coughs> when it was on the thing, if you hadn't punched her in the in the face mm. with, or hit her in the head with the, the torch. Yeah, sure. Or that hadn't worked or something. My plan was to explain it away by saying that Errol had spilled a bovril or anything and all the black stuff coming towards us was just really goopy bovril. Just really <laughs> bovril. Oh, yeah. And sadly, I never got to yeah, have another... To I was going to have another bovril rant. I was going to make him clean it up. <laughs> that <laughs> was actually... It never happened. That's actually something that I, I realised afterwards that I should have done was actually get you or, or somebody to, to make a role to see how well you convinced Tess after she came out of her unconsciousness yeah. um, of yeah. Your, yeah. your side of events because in the end you did a load of other roles to see how well the, the show went yeah. Yeah. but I never actually introduced any chance into uh, how well your plan to convince her that it mm. was all fine went yeah. <laughs> so. or the chance that she would wake up and not yeah. quite remember <laughs> what we had done and tell the police that you that you smacked her with a torch. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we'd have dobbed you in straight away. Yeah. Roll I'd have for, thrown you under the bus. Roll for a guilty verdict. <laughs> <laughs> no one had any trust with me, so I'd have been on you straight away. Yeah. <laughs> what was the bovril thing about? It was just a stupid joke that I came up with that I really wanted to put in there. And you just yeah. didn't expect for the incandescent rage. <laughs> no, no, I think he did expect the incandescent rage. I, I, I expected bafflement. Uh, mm. And it was it was almost kind of a way of setting the tone of like something is a bit off and bizarre here, yeah. something is mm. a bit inexplicable. In a way, it was kind of a throwing you a red herring, and that there was also the possibility that you might have like that might have put a lot of suspicion on Errol, yeah, and you might have ended up focusing on him yeah. as as a potential yeah. source. Of Tried problems. to poison us with Bovril. Yeah, <laughs> what? How much further will he go? Yeah, I de- I did not. Ex- I, I expected bafflement. I did not expect the rage. Yeah, <laughs> me and Strat were both very angry. Oh, it was about a pure it. and burning rage. Yeah, you found the two people in the world that were going to give you that. Rage. <laughs> I mean, if I'd actually drunk any, then I would have been. <laughs> even if we fake drunk, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, no, but there I was, was no like, I just had tea. Bovril. I didn't even have fake bovril. No. I had tea, but oh, just the fact tea. that Strat had ended up with bovril made me angry. <laughs> oh god, bovril rage. You'd have thought. Well. Yeah, if you're listening, Bovril, we're available for sponsorship. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we mentioned it literally 100 times. We, we, had, we did have a, a tweet after that episode came out saying, when I started listening to this, I did not expect to hear the word Bovril literally one million times. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I don't think anybody did. No one did. No, no one did. No one did. But it worked out well. We're um, not sponsored by Bovril. No, no certainly not. What is wrong with you? <laughs> hey. Um, so, you, so there were no other things where, Matt, you felt like oh, I had this really cool thing that I wanted to get in there and it didn't happen. I was doing my level best not to approach it that way right. because then I would end up... Disappointed consistently. Yeah, disappointed. Or, <laughs> well, or trying like, to make or, us do uh, things. Yeah, trying to railroad you towards stuff that, <coughs> that didn't feel logical to you. So right. I've been trying to approach it as I'm, I'm giving you a set of circumstances and then it's up to you how to respond. Mm. Um, I guess the, the only other thing that I thought that you might gravitate towards that I was a little bit surprised that you didn't was setting up some sort of seance or, or mm. like... yeah we're going to spend the night in the spooky place yeah. like in a circle of protection and see what manifests because that would have linked him really well with the play we were doing mm, yeah. which is yeah. the ghost finder yeah. which had like a load of 
spooky seance props we could have used. Yeah. yeah. I guess really the, like, the story didn't, not a huge amount of time elapsed no. within the yeah. story. So that would no. make sense if it was like, oh, we'll come back tomorrow and see. But, but we, it felt like we it was escalating kind of, quite quickly. Oh, yeah, and we, we kind of tackled did. things kind of head on. Yeah, it was weird characters. that uh, one of you finally went into a room with windows and I was like, oh, hang yes. on, it's actually still, like, it's not even yeah. lunchtime. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the yeah. time of the day. Yeah. <laughs> I yeah, like, seven oh, yeah. hours was, at first. I was all ready to be like, yeah, it was oh, me. It's very, yeah. it's very dark and stormy. It's like, no, it's not dark. It's still daytime. <laughs> yeah, it's just daytime. It's central London. People are just going about their business on Oxford Street. All they've had to refresh themselves is Bovril. <laughs> yeah. Um, and were there things, fellow team players, that you thought, oh, I wish I hadn't done that, or oh, I wish I'd taken that opportunity? I mean, obviously now there's a few things we know we could have done much with. Yeah. Them, but yeah. like pre 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 knowing that. I think for me, though, I will, if I get a chance to do it next time, um, will be to be a bit freer with the role playing mm. um, and get more involved with the role playing. Well, because I, I felt that I was a little bit standoffish because I was a bit like trying to gauge yeah. what's going on, how can we work this? And I think I overthought it too much rather than just going, let's do this, let's do that. Bah, 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 yeah. Bah. Mm. I totally agree with Alex. Like, I think in the second pl- play around, because I've done a second yeah, one yeah, already. Yeah. I was good. definitely much more like, this is a thing I'm going to do now. This is a thing I'm going to yeah, do now. more decisive. Rather than thinking like, oh, maybe I'll do this. Or maybe I was just like, I'm just going to go with it because yeah. it keeps things moving yeah, more and quickly. It was one of the key differences is that in that sec- in season two, I think it was the first time anybody went off and did something independent of everybody else. Yeah. Mm. You, you mm. went off and said I'm going to decide to I think it was calling calling the kids parents or something yeah. and you're like I'm going to do this and I'm going to deceive everybody else about what, what I'm doing whereas I think in season 1 there was a lot of dis- yeah. discussion between the group you yeah. need to make a decision as a four yeah. Yeah. yeah I kind of get the thing having obviously I'm only a couple of ser- a couple of episodes into season 2 it's not yeah. all out while we're, we're discussing this but I think a big part for, for me is listening to the both and, and the difference between the two is in the season 1 we kind of came in at the start of something mm. and the setup, and we we kind of had to role play it as like, well, we're just going in and setting up a show. Yeah. So there's a good mm. 20, 30 minutes of us just yeah. role playing ourselves, yeah. which perhaps wasn't. It because didn't nothing get to necessarily anything. weird had happened yeah. in order for us to need to address it. Or it was weird, but yeah. it was kind of like rumours of weird. There wasn't a definite thing yeah. for us to attack. Yeah. Whereas in season two, because you're like halfway through there, you've established where well, you are. Well, you've established the norm. You've established you? the norm and there's something going on and you're specifically told it is this yeah. thing. I won't say what yeah. it is in case people haven't started <laughs> listening to it. But it's like, this is the thing you need to, to fix, I yeah. think meant that it threw you into that with yeah. a lot more kind of, some, a lot more direction yeah. rather yeah. than us yeah. was like, well, we'll set up We're, some props let's keep, then. Let's keep doing the yeah. normal things we do until something <laughs> happens. Something becomes yes. irrevocably weird. That yeah. will mean we have to respond and to that it. And that was a conscious improvement I made mm. after listening back to season one and going, actually, this takes quite a while to get going. And part of it was there was some exposition that I had planned for Tess to provide which I forgot to give you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> solid, solid effort. That's, that's how it goes sometimes. Lessons learned, people. The thing is, though, even you, you saying that, like, oh, I forgot to do this, and I as the, the what do you call the in-charge person? So, powered by the apocalypse, GM. technically... Co- technically <laughs> that's a bit of a word. The rules for the system technically refer to it as an MC. Uh-huh. Oh, interesting, yeah. Okay. Other, like, the generic term in general role. Oh, is it Game Master? Game, yeah, game Master. master. Uh, okay. So yeah, GMMC, whatever combination of letters you want to use. Um, I think despite you saying, oh yeah, actually I realised I'd messed up this, that and the other in, in series one, um, I came off the back of series one being thinking, actually, I, I don't need to, like Vicky was saying, think so much about what yeah. I'm doing and discuss all the options. Yeah. Because whatever I do, I can just do. And then if it, there's no wrong thing to do, and if we're not getting close enough to some action and moving things on, then that's Matt's job. <laughs> yeah. As GMMC, he's going to step in and it's in his, like, best interest for things to keep moving so the, the the better thing for me to do is to not think oh what is the most efficient way to yeah, solve yeah, this problem yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> which is maybe what in real life is the better thing yeah. to do but yeah. in the game playing world not interesting <laughs> not yeah. interesting at all it's like what's happening over there is there a light switch that I can flick on and off there yeah. for a little let's bit let's say something outrageous thing. to this person that we just met that's yeah. fine <laughs> I think it is yeah. difficult when you are playing it is a little bit difficult when you're playing yourself to yes. drop 
to drop the and also like you don't want to go so far off the reservation that things that you do make no sense yeah yeah like, you still have to do things that seem like i think you have to at least at the start do things that seem like a relatively logical progression otherwise it's suddenly like oh and we're immediately going to call the police and it's like whoa we don't that, even that know that if make, there's a problem that yet. makes sense in the genre <laughs> yeah the yeah that you're, mm. you're put into yeah. yeah that's an interesting challenge as well and i think i felt weirdly like more comfortable with um season two because it felt more like um a witness story yeah because we related it to yeah. arthur ransom and Blyson, and i was like oh there's stories that i know yeah whereas the first one it was like oh you are a theater company you are playing yourself you're going to do a get in at a theater and then some strange things are going to happen and i knew from matt that it was going to be supernatural mm. but for me that didn't feel i guess like um attached to enough of fictional stories that I know for me to feel like I could just be a character and part of the story. It's an interesting challenge. I've actually been talking to other uh, game masters and other sort of runners of actual play podcasts on Twitter about getting your players to play versions of themselves and the problems and challenges and advantages inherent Mm. in that. Because I do think it's, uh, and correct me if I'm wrong, kind of easier to get into the idea of doing role-playing when you don't have to try and think... Am I being true to this character yeah. I've made up? Yeah, it is easier. If, yeah. if your the question in your mind is just what would I do? Yeah, mm-hmm. mm-hmm. as kind of easier to get started. And I think it's also easier for remembering how you would approach fellow team players because mm-hmm. not only would you have to hold your own character in your head, but also the characters mm-hmm. of everyone else around you and be like, yeah. oh well, I'm an angry troll. Mm-hmm. So how would I approach um, this happy princess? Mm-hmm. You can tell I played a lot of these games. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I feel like all of your knowledge is based on the TV show community. Correct. (laughs) The hardest me approaching the hardest thing. The hardest thing I find in any role playing game is just remembering other characters' names. (laughs) Yes. Just (laughs) just spelling them. It's It's much easier just to look at you and be like, "It's Strat." I'm going to just talk to Strat. But we're (laughs) playing me and Matt and Alex and a couple of us are playing a D and D game at the moment. The Matt is DMing. And I, I can't remember <laughs> my character's name, at the, let alone <laughs> anyone else else's. at the moment. So being able to play yourself comes with a lot of yeah. benefits of just being able to say, oi, Ellie, or, or yeah. 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 whatever. The disadvantage, of, of course, is it, it would not work if we all didn't know each other already. Yeah. Yes. No. So if yeah. we start, if we get to the stage which I'd like to get to of, of bringing in more guests mm-hmm. and, and yeah. people who are slightly not in quite such a tight-knit friend yes, group yeah. then it actually becomes a barrier if everybody's playing themselves because yes. yeah. they don't necessarily know how everybody else would react yeah. but also I guess that you get pluses with that situation because then you kind of get a oh getting to know each other and finding the vibe at the same time as the listeners do yeah. whereas for us something particularly with season one I was really concerned about was like oh we can't do loads of in-jokes <laughs> uh, because no one's going to get that no. <laughs> Yeah. Um, but actually I think we I relaxed more in season two because I thought well actually we're creating the in-jokes as we go Yeah. yeah. so it, you know it, it's fine um, and also I think what really helps is that although you're playing yourself you get to do all that kind of scoring at the beginning and getting your special skills and stuff which aren't necessarily true to life. Yeah. In fact, a lot of them aren't. <laughs> um, I mean, you're very strong, Vicky, but yeah, you're not, not that strong. That strong. <laughs> um, so that kind of gives you the fantasy leeway mm. to be like, oh, well, I'm going to be this version of myself. Yeah. So I'm still playing a character and can make decisions I would not normally make. I definitely feel like in season two, I gave myself a bit more permission to follow that than yeah. I did in season one. To like play up, yeah. and find the middle ground between what would I exactly. actually do in real life and yeah. playing the stats yeah. as yeah. it were yeah, yeah. that's yeah. something yeah. that I think if I do it again I will I will be much more aware of yeah. Yeah. and I do want to do some episodes at some point in the future where we are creating new characters rather than playing ourselves that yeah. would be really good I think yeah. with practice it just comes with practice yeah like, I already found season 2 easier than I found season yeah. 1 like I f- like by about ten t- tenfold yeah. found it easier well the unknown is is out of it and I imagine yeah if we come back and do the same because it's like I was coming into it thinking this like I've done a lot of role playing so I, it be, it's a completely different mm. style of role playing like a hundred percent if there's a lot mm. there's rolling the dice and that's about it not then, only be- or not least because this we are doing this for broadcast ex- yeah yeah, that's exactly yeah. what I was so going to say. Yeah. It's not just a game; it's a it's a performance as mm. well. Yeah. And I'm, I'm having to think not just as a as a game master or MC, but as a uh, like a radio producer as well, mm. and trying to not just keep the story going, but thinking: is this how good is this for the audience? Yeah, mm. yeah, yeah. Because yeah. yeah. it needs to be satisfying a story, and that was why I was hoping for a more a showdown with the baddie in mm. season one. I think it was, it was sort of what we found to get round it was really cool. But it, I was sort of, oh, I wish there'd been like a big, like a kind of some sort of battle climactic yeah. 
thing. You, but you, that's that's you weird suggested about not long after that, like you were kind of expecting once you knocked out Tess for the thing to actually be independent of her yes. at that point and for it uh, not, not to quite work as oh, you intended. Yeah. Right. But I think it like that might have happened if there'd been like a mixed success. Yeah. Yeah, like, yeah. we just we just did too well. I think yeah. that was part of the problem with season one, which is something that none of us could control, <laughs> is that actually we rolled mostly really successfully yeah. Yeah. did not fail a lot which is what I really liked in season two you introduce like if you fail you get some points for failing like there are, there are rewards for failing much more comfortable with it in, in yeah. season two yeah. I don't know that we had to become because... comfortable with failure very quickly I don't in know if that was also two. because like Chris and Dave were so laissez-faire about the whole thing like, yeah whatever Dave was looking for the fail he's yeah. looking for the fail, for the fail so yeah it works uh... I think one of the things that, that happened uh, pace wise in season one is it, it gets to a point where it's like that every kind of next step is sort of logical. Mm. Yeah. Whereas in season two, we had a couple of things that completely swerved. Things. Yes. Yeah. Quite a lot of the time. Yeah. And there was a lot of situations where it was like, well, there are literally three things we could do here and they all seem to have equal likelihood of succeeding. <laughs> so let's just choose one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And quite a lot of stuff goes pretty pretty wrong but go sideways yeah, yeah. so oh yeah i'm hoping it's uh it, it sounds as kind of climactic as it felt but, when yeah. we were doing it so. yeah great any any more final things before we wrap this up no no, no. anything you you want to yeah say about the experience matt about how um, wonderful everybody was was amazing thank you thank you all <laughs> so much for uh <laughs> For going with it and like getting over the fear and um, rolling with the punches in the same way as I had to from all of you. So. <laughs> and yeah, <laughs> telling a good story. Yeah, I feel cleansed. Trying, trying stuff. Yeah. I feel mm-hmm. cleansed from this conversation. Yeah. yeah. Boom. Thanks, Matt. Let's do it Cheers. again sometime. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Merely Role Players is produced by MJ Starling in association with Blackshaw Theatre Company. Search for the show on iTunes, Stitcher, or your usual podcast service, and if you can't find it, let us know. We're on Twitter at Merely Roleplay and Facebook.com slash Merely Roleplayers. Reviews and kind words are all very much appreciated, and we hope you'll join us again for our next episode.